Welcome to Wednesday, everyone. Here at Jesus Plus Life, we are all about bringing you cheery conversations and juicy topics. We're really excited about this week's episode. It's actually part two of the conversation we showed from last week with Sunny, Dawn, and Angela. If you missed last week, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and watch any past episode. We're gonna jump right into part two as Dawn continues the conversation from part one about being a yeller in the home. We all know exactly what she is talking about. So grab your coffee, hit that share button, and start watching as these ladies continue the conversation. I'm a yeller too, and it's hard to go back and make that apology. Mm -hmm. And even now that I'm not a yeller, even if I just talk to them in a certain way, they're like, you're yelling. And I'm like, actually, I'm not. <laughs> actually, only my eyes are yelling. <laughs> no, I said, maybe my words feel like yelling. I said, but I am speaking very calmly. Mm -hmm. And I tend to have a louder voice. And so I find myself having to be even more intentional about quieting my voice mm -hmm. to even a whisper. Mm -hmm. And then even though my they don't like my words, they know like, okay, mom's not yelling. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I've... But that's really good because the... And to tell them I'm not yelling. Mm -hmm. Because that's the other thing, when you're trying to change the legacy of your family and you're trying to change the tone of your home, mm -hmm. your kids or your spouse or yourself will try to keep you in that box of I'm a yeller, right. I'm sure. an angry mm -hmm. parent. And when you're trying to change it, you can go, but they see me as the same. So an example would be, my family was like, you're always on your phone. And I, I mean, for the first probably four or five years of the six and a half years here, that was my mm -hmm. reputation in my family. Mm -hmm. Well, mommy, you're just always on your phone. Well, I would get mad at it because if I gave up my phone for a week at 3 p.m., so I pick them up from school mm -hmm. and I gave it up and they would still say I'm on my phone, I'd be so mad because I'm right. like, most people I'm work till five. So hard. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, if I had right. a real job, <laughs> yeah. then right. I'd have to, right. you know, because I, yep. I felt like I'm really doing my part. But I gave it a week and then I'm mad that they still call me right. addicted sure. to my phone. Don't you sure. see the changes? Yeah. That Yes. 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 Yeah. And it's like, it's kind of like losing weight. It, you don't, and no one really sees the changes yeah. for a long time. Sure. Like you're two months in and somebody finally goes, are you losing weight? You're like, oh my gosh, I've been working for two months. Thank you for saying yeah, something. Thank you. I just, it's finally showing. Why didn't it show in the beginning? I think the changes, like I'm not a yeller. Um, my kids, uh, we're like, you react. Like when we say something our friends are doing, you react crazy. And I am not anymore. But I had to tell myself, they're not gonna see a change in me the first week that I'm not reacting. Sure. It's gonna take them a while. And now with my phone, I don't think that they think I'm addicted to my phone. But what I would do is I would, um, I'd not want to follow it through. I'd want to give excuses, mm -hmm. but I, so then like you said, you have to remind them I'm not a yeller. I'm right. not yelling right now. Right. Well, I had to say, guys, when I'm on my phone, it's still three o'clock. I am going to work till five. I'm not playing games. Like right, I'm sure. on my, basically right. my laptop. That's my right. phone doing work. Right. I'm not ignoring you. But I also had to know if we're driving, I can't be like talking on the phone, which mm -hmm. one that's not safe, but like I need to be there. Mm -hmm. sure. So it's just, I have to do my part and I have to remind them I'm doing my part right. without like rubbing it in their face. Yeah, yeah. and that's been like an issue that. for us too. I've had many conversations with my kids about my job because my job mm. isn't normal. No. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I do have my phone on me a lot. On because me. you work with sex trafficking survivors, yeah. with police officers, right. law enforcement. And so I'm on call a lot. Yeah. And so it was a conversation about you are on your phone a lot. And it was a conversation of, you know what, is this too much for you guys? Do mm. you want mommy to go and find a normal job? Mm -hmm. And my son, it's gonna make me cry. Why That's okay. We cry. cry here. We don't we cry, cry and we laugh. We, don't, we, we cry. cry. We only laugh till we cry. Yeah. But <laughs> my son, who him and I have, him and I are very alike. So we we're both really stubborn. So we we struggle. And he looked at me and he goes, "Mommy, why would I ever ask you to do that? You have a job that you love, mm -hmm. that you are really really good at. Why would I ever ask you to give that up?" Mm -hmm. And I was like. 
dang no, okay wow, wow. <laughs> um so like we but we've had those conversations and I have I've had those conversations with my youngest mm-hmm. as well as we've navigated a life change and and how that was and not being able to be there as often through that life change and and she was like no I think it's great what you do so mm-hmm. it's just a matter of being open and having those mm-hmm. conversations and you asked yeah. you didn't tell and I think that's the right. thing as parents were we're like my job is to tell my job is to teach my right. job is to discipline mm-hmm. we just had another Jesus plus life where Kalia and Aubrey were with Casey and I so we were with our daughters and we said what advice would you give to moms of teenagers and they said maybe to like hang out have coffee and just talk right. like a friend but they also in the next question said or in that same question Aubrey said and to have boundaries because we know that boundaries keep us safe. Right. Mm-hmm. And I was like, so you're saying you want boundaries and you want friendship. And isn't that the line that we're teetering sure. on? But they want to talk, which means when you converse, there's questions and answers both ways. Mm-hmm. I'm not just lecturing. And that coffee sure. you know, date that right. I now know to have with Aubrey, that's what they want. That's where I do. I can ask the questions like you did. And I think now you put it on them to make the decision about your job and mm-hmm. your life. And now that they're in on that decision, they're fully in. Yeah. Why would they ever want you to quit your job? Like, that's so valuable, you just ask. And we've done that, I've done that with other changes that we've dealt with is, what do you guys think? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to move forward on any of this until you guys have the opportunity to weigh in. Because it's going to affect you guys too. Mm -hmm. And I know you've done that with with your son. I was going to say, because you foster care. Yeah, um, we, it's always a family decision. And we, when we started that journey and process, we explained to him, mom and dad, we're the leaders. We make the decisions, you know, if Jesus is calling us to do something, Mm -hmm. we are going to be the final decision makers. However, you're part of this team, part of this family. Um, so there's one situation this spring where we literally had to like fly into his school to you know pull him out of class, get a decision on a potential wow. placement. Um, it you know common in the foster care system. It did fall through, but he was so um, I could just tell honored Aww. to be included. And how old is um, he? He is 11. He'll be 12 in October. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they're getting, know, they're, they're getting old. Getting the old. babies are getting old. Um, but it just, it really, it meant a lot to me just to bring him into the yeah. process and just to see his reaction. Um, and even, I think because, and I think you probably feel this way too, we involve him in the process of those big decisions mm-hmm. for our family. It teaches him so much yeah. about, you know, moving forward, being a team member, being a leader. Yeah. Uh, he, I mean, he, it does, it just kind of strengthens his character and it's really basic easy thing to do yeah Mm -hmm. well you guys are treating them like young adults which parenting is getting them ready to not be with us Mm -hmm. and so they they have to and some people have taken that concept of well you know let them do all of the junk so they don't do it in college and that's like the best advice people have is you know get them drunk at your house so they won't get drunk in college and let them you know get high because and we go well we would never do that but no there is a there is a, a wise concept of saying let's bring you into are we going to take in this foster child and are we good with this as a family this will affect everything that you're preparing him to be a man and you're asking your kids like what do you want to do how do you feel about this so they realize that life is way more complicated than school and home Mm -hmm. right you know i think all of this is even like i i think baby talking to a one-year-old or a two-year-old is a disservice if i'm like talking without full vocabulary they might be delayed in speech Mm -hmm. um our kids were telling us what to do by age three Mm -hmm. in full senses but we talked to them like this like and they're two we didn't do oh cool cool and i look at it now and i go i didn't realize what we accidentally did right which was expect more of them Mm -hmm. and i think when you expect more of your teenager and that requires that they know the why when we say no Mm -hmm. they know what the why when we're moving forward on something they're unsure of they're they're little adults right. and we're preparing them to be that so that's both of you great job on that but it's exhausting sometimes. yes oh it's can easier I, just to say because i said so yes. oh, <laughs> can i just please say that one time just, 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 just because, because i said, said so. so and that just be the decision <laughs> yes wouldn't Good that luck. be much easier yes but I mean, no it's no. exhausting to mm-hmm. do that parenting's a over. full-time plus job 
Oh, it is. Uh -huh. It is, if you're doing it right. Yeah. But the job description's always changing. It's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Day to day, hour to hour, almost. Minutes. Yes. It's it's to minutes. To minutes. <laughs> minute to minutes. Yeah. What label have you put on yourself that you need to get rid of? Comment below. You are more than any label anyone has ever put on you. I loved how this conversation moved right into a topic that weighs heavy on us as parents, our jobs, and the impact it can have on our family. Talking about any struggles that impact your family as a family helps everyone have buy-in with the decision that is made. Such a great takeaway from this conversation. How do you involve the whole family in decision making? We call a family meeting and sit in our living room. What do you do? Sunny said, expect more of them. Let them talk it out with you and let them tell you their thoughts. You might be surprised. Let's hear what else these ladies talked about in this week's episode. One other thing I was thinking about, I always think about you and Pastor and the journey you've been on and all of the people you've met and just even some of the stories I know at our church, you know, the highest of highs and the lowest mm -hmm. of lows with so much coming at you. Like how, how do you even stay sane? I think that frequently like, could I handle all of the people and all of their energy, good, you know, good, bad, middle of the road, whatever mm -hmm. it is. I think that frequently like, oh my mm -hmm. goodness, how do they handle it? Well, I'm like a broken record and Jesus plus life. I feel like, you know, probably three out of five episodes, I talk about my five, yeah. my priorities, but honestly, that's the only way sure. um, that if God, if I don't have time with God, I wouldn't. I can't, I don't, I can't imagine being people that carry a lot on their plate and they don't have Jesus. Like right. I just, I have a meltdown. Or you can see why people are like, I work for the weekend. I'm going to get wasted on the weekend. I'm like, I guess if you have nothing to like be your source of mm -hmm. joy and keeping me on track, maybe you just live for the weekend and I wouldn't want to live that life. But their pressure, it's real. Mm -hmm. So God first, then me. I mean, there are weeks I'm like, I need a massage. And can we afford a massage? I could probably do something better with my money. I mean, like, I always have iHeartWorld playing in my head. I don't need that purse. I can buy an iHeartWorld purse. I don't need to get that extra. Sure. I could give that to iHeartWorld. I could up my support. But there's something about if, if I'm not good with God and I'm not good and I'm just like at the end of my rope, it all just dominoes. Yep. And so... I do, when you say all the people around and everything that's going on, here's the thing, the, f the first five have not changed. So all the extra people, sure. they aren't as important to me as God, myself, Sean, my kids, and my staff. And like, there's people right. that they're like a family. And then of course my parents who are in Florida. And so it goes, I mean, those are five. And then all the extra people. Now, some might be offended by that and go, but I'm in your church. And how dare you not put me as a priority? I'm like, I'm sorry. Who's going to be around my bed at the end sure. of my life? I'm going to talk about this in my Jacob Bible study today, actually. Who's around my bed when I die? There's not going to be thousands of people. There's mm -hmm. going to be some people from the top five. And the fifth of my priorities, some of those won't be around my bed. Sure. Mm -hmm. And so that's how. Mm -hmm. And then if God can trust me with those, it's kind of like the little things, although those aren't little, but mm -hmm. the, the early on priorities, he can trust me with a lot. Right. So I'm not able to have coffee with all the people. And the bigger mm -hmm. our church gets, if somebody needs coffee with Sunny, or if um, somebody needs like lots of attention from me. I might be really zeroed in on my kids right now because they're 14 and 16 and I want more time with them than I've ever wanted with them. Cause now I'm actually like stressing out. They're going to leave soon. So I might be with them by two o'clock in the day, mm -hmm. right. not by five o'clock in the day mm -hmm. because it's summer. And, uh, so I think that's how, and if I didn't have that, then just, you'd keep adding numbers right. and those people who need that, they, if that's what they need, um, I would be their God anyway, and I'm not God and I shouldn't be. So they don't right. need me. Does that make sense? Yeah. Your top five. If you haven't heard what that is, it is a staple of Jesus plus life. It is about putting your priorities in order, not just any order, the right order. God, yourself, your spouse, your kids, and others. Some might apply to you if you aren't married or you don't have kids yet, but those first two are for everyone. When one is out of place, it impacts everything else in your life. You can read all about this in Sunny's book, Jesus Plus Life, available at Life Church and at the Exchange in De Pere. Watch this promo on how you can hear all the conversations from Jesus Plus Life everywhere you go. When you add Jesus to your life, 
don't be surprised when your life changes. And with change come a lot of questions. That's why we're starting a conversation about the journey. You can join Sunny Hennessy, author of Jesus Plus Life, right here for a conversation each week. You'll hear questions from Jesus people just like you. Questions about living everyday life with Jesus. Every Tuesday, you'll get the latest conversation. You can subscribe wherever you like to listen. Jesus Plus Life, the podcast. When you subscribe to our podcast, you can listen to all the wisdom and Jesus Center advice from every conversation. Now let's wrap up this week's conversation and learn more about priorities. How do you give yourself grace on the days where your five falter? Where your focus on that five falters? Well, TV I'm a little, uh, Shocking. I know this is not going to shock you at all. <gasps> I'm a little OCD. So on the days when I'm not getting, like, I don't get that time for Jesus, then I just beat myself up. Because like, are you oh a list, gosh. like OCD, like one, two, three, four, five? And not, then, a, not a physical list, but, but in your head, a, you know, yeah. a list and sometimes an actual list. But if mm-hmm. I don't get that, then I'm like, oh, well, then I just feel like it just kind of mm-hmm. dominoes. Like then it's the next mm-hmm. day and it's the next day. And then I'm like, oh, well, there's three days. Well, I might as well just start again on Monday. Like the whole diet mentality. Yeah. yeah. So how do you give yourself that grace in those days where that focus on your five falters? Well, my job is to be a pastor. So I really should be reading my Bible every day, right? Mm-hmm. Like that, hello. Mm-hmm. Like um, a doctor should probably go to the hospital or the clinic every day. Mm-hmm. And they should focus on that. I should be reading. And I don't get to my Bible more than three to four days days a week like sit read prayer journal so how is the person who that isn't their full-time career really gonna get there seven days a week or six days I'm giving you permission (laughs) I'm giving you permission (laughs) like don't you are we gonna go to the gym seven days a week and if that's on our list but Mm -hmm. then that doesn't happen we get frustrated Mm -hmm. but why not give ourselves a goal of three days Mm -hmm. and so I've given myself permission now what I do is that the days I'm not having that time I will put on, as I'm doing my makeup, because I tend to do my makeup most days, I will put on my YouVersion app and have the Bible read to me as I do my makeup. Because maybe I've got an early appointment, I'm just like, I didn't wake up early enough. Or I put on the Bible Project videos. Mm -hmm. And half the time I'm like, shoot, I should have like watched that clearer, but I hear it. Uh, I have the Bible verse of the day from YouVersion Mm -hmm. emailed to me. Mm -hmm. I'm for sure getting scripture every single day. Mm -hmm. I for sure am, there's no doubt. But am I getting, like open up my Bible and research that word every day no three to four times a week I get some in-depth stuff so that's the thing is that you can't be OCD about God Mm -hmm. and about your relationship with him (laughs) you can't you got to say no OCD God yes yes Uh, the other thing is I think when it comes to priorities TD Jake said it best I heard this and it freed me a few years ago that We just can't steal from the same thing two weeks in a row. But we're not gonna get all five in one week. This week, Sean and I have had less time together. He's now the pastor for the Packers, and he's at training camp, which won't be forever, but it's right now really concentrated. So he's at training camp, he comes home, he works on his sermon from like 3 p.m. to 8 Mm p.m. We're not having Sean and Sunny time this week, Mm -hmm. but we're not gonna steal from that. Maybe if that goes into next week, Mm -hmm. we know week three, we're not gonna steal from Sean and Sunny time. Mm -hmm. There's gonna be weeks that the kids are going and we're heading in different directions and we didn't have kid time. Mm -hmm. Well, let's just make up for that. Mm -hmm. So I think that freed me, is Mm -hmm. that there is no such thing as perfect balance every week. It's Mm -hmm. this week I did these two of the five really well. This week I got really strong on the ones I lacked on, I Mm -hmm. slacked on before. Okay. I, th- I mean, I think I often think of the five, which I learned from you probably three or four years ago already. It's this puzzle that I'm forever putting together. The pieces are different for this season. Yes. Sometimes it's so much Bible time because that's what's needed. Other times it's so much kid time because that's, I feel like the five is a good basis. I mm-hmm. love that. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes you can... You can let people and outside voices, people you work with, people you don't even work with, but they're like, you know, second degree of separation and you're, you're letting what they're saying, what you heard they said, what's going on in their life totally affect you. And you're like, hold on. They're like number eight. (laughs) Why the heck am I consumed? Because I've gotten, if I get a text from somebody and they're like, you know, I feel like we used to spend more time together. 
that will like totally affect me to then when my kids walk in the room and I just got that text and I'm irritated like I can't do it anymore I can't do everything that my kids get yelled at mm -hmm. because not because of anything they did but because I'm just and so I'm like I have to silence those voices right. and realize those are not as important and, I, and I'm not going to let that get to me although that's easier said than done sure give yourself grace Hear that and accept that. We are not perfect and we will fail, but you don't have to beat yourself up. What I learned from this was to make sure I am setting attainable goals and what makes them attainable is looking at where my priorities are at. Are they in the right order? Where am I spending my time that I might need to shift to something else to make sure I'm not stealing from one area that needs my attention? Sunny said there's no such thing as perfect balance every week. So write that down and don't forget it. You can live by that. Thank you so much for joining us this week. If you missed part one of this conversation, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and watch it. In fact, you can watch any of our weekly conversations on YouTube so you can stay caught up. We love spending Wednesdays with you. Set a reminder to join us for a brand new cheery conversation next week at 8.30 a.m.